Coast, Ireland. <laughs> Max. Yes. Big day. Very big day. So tell me, so you've got two works being recorded here today. Is that unusual or is that uh, a run of the mill thing for you? Does this happen to you every day? No, it doesn't. And the thing about this, because we're so tight for budget, really, it might have been better just to do one in one day. But uh, I, I got all the players together and it's, it's going to be for a CD released by NMC. But I thought that I've got two good string pieces, one with cello to make a cello concerto, another one that's just a string piece that I wrote. It's quite old now, it's easily 10 years old now. And that work, I just thought it would be perfect on the CD as well. To this have that photography. Yeah, photography. And the other thing about it is, is that my fr photography was written as a wedding present for my friends, Sarah Suckling and Oliver Wilson, and they were playing in it today. Cello Concerto was written as an engagement present for Matthew Sharp, both performed first by Orchestra the Swan and commissioned by them. And there's something about, I realise just that all those connections have made this piece given it a lot of meaning for me now. It's, it's also about friendship, musical associations that go right back, and sort of a real sense of love, really. So. The thing about Matthew's playing is that, you know, I've worked with him several times now, and this piece is very much based around the way he likes to play. But also, it's the way he sings, it's all the way he acts. And um, I, in this music, I tried to bring out, like, this sense of drama at all times. The way he, even in with one note, Matthew playing, there's always an, it's always an event. He loves playing high. He loves playing lyrically, but then he also really loves playing really rhythmically. Um, and so everything was, well, firstly, the piece was a gift to him and Fiona for their engagement, but also it, I tried to imbue all the qualities, the musical qualities, as well as Matthew Sharp's personality. And, you know, for a composer, that is everything when you're composing because you've got something sort of to fix on. But then having said that, there's something very abstract about this piece for me because I was very aware that I was trying to chisel out notes. And because Matthew plays, you know, can play across the whole range of the cello, he's fearless. So he, a lot of this music is written extremely high. In a, in a way, it gave me great scope to play with notes. Things about you, so lovely, lovely. maybe you'd like to say nice things about no, you myself. Have to, I mean, I mean, yeah. <laughs> when I first opened the score, I sort of wish he hadn't <laughs> because I opened it, went, Oh my god, it's a violin concerto on the cello. Um, but it has been a complete pleasure and a joy to get under the skin of it and um, kind of unlock all of those, um, you know, those rapturous high things and earthy low things and. Um, yeah, it's a it's a fiendish thing, and maybe that's uh, you know maybe Evelyn knows me better than myself. In a lot of my music, I'm aiming for the sense of freedom. So when the listener hears it, everything should sound free to me. But to capture that in notation means sadly that often things look really difficult, like time-wise rhythms look difficult. But it's trying because I'm always trying to um, what's the word? Let the sounds. Uh, not be dictated by our rather limited notation system. But it mm. does mean that learning my music can be tricky. Mm. But also the, what is <coughs> thrilling about it is the sense of adventure mm. as well, and that also the cello is doing things. I mean, there's, it's not really extended techniques at all. It's just using the whole uh, compass of what it can achieve, and that's, that's always great yeah. too. Now, the, the thing about you, Erin, is, um, well, um, ever since I've known you, which isn't that long, it's true. But you do have this amazing dynamism, this an optimism, and you know, like you're kind of very much a can-do person. So where do you think that comes from? It's, it seems like nothing will defeat you. It, it, I know, because things are defeating me all the time. I mean, I, I'll tell you what was defeating me, getting these parts already, 
putting all the markings in, proofing the scores, checking the scores, making, photocopying the scores, scanning the scores. That defeated me. I actually, I think I might have cried. Because, but it's the music. I just want to get to the music all the time. And I think that's the big drive for me. It's the music. And it's not even that it's... There's something about being composed. If you've written works, and I've written a lot now, and they get one performance, they still haunt you. And you just think, I've got to just do something about it. You've got to take charge of some of your own compositions that you've already written. So I'm just doing that. But so yeah. are you saying that the music drives you? Yeah, totally.